Hey, a shout out to Dr. Michelle Young for the inspiration for this video. So just last week, she shared on her Instagram page about her current home and uh, what she's moving into and how they found the different issues and how it was a process of elimination to actually get to the source of mold that was in the basement and how they handled it. So uh, thank you, Dr. Michelle. Uh, by the way, she does help people with uh, mold illness, especially kids. She has a really good holistic approach, so go and check her out. Uh, I'll link it. Uh, all of her information on this video. So the mold checklist started to really come up in my mind a lot recently because what I'm seeing is a lot of people are only using one data point uh, to try to diagnose a mold issue in the house. And I think about it like if you're gonna diagnose a body or someone's health with only one data point, you're gonna miss a ton, right? If someone's getting headaches and you just get locked in on, it must be this one thing and you throw a med at it or you're sleeping wrong, so it must be this and you're not getting a holistic approach of genetics and lifestyle and stress levels and nutrition and air and attitude and all these different things, then we're gonna miss a ton. So I have a similar philosophy in the home and her video really, really inspired me on this because the quick story for her house is she was moving into a new home, got all the inspections done, but wanted me to help from a distance, assess some photos, the home inspection report, several different things and walk through the process like I do uh, with many people nationwide. Um, in her home, they only had one sign, and it was a thermal imaging infrared scan uh, in the corner of the basement where it looked like a funky dark uh, shape, and I'll explain about that exact equipment uh, in this video later, but that was the only data point they had that they had a significant issue, potentially. So they assigned to, uh, to or they, they wanted to get cut out. They asked me to kind of walk them through the process of who they were hiring in there just to get that investigative you know, removal to see if it was a bigger issue or if it was just a cold spot, you know, with the thermal imaging camera. Well, sure enough, they opened it up and it had been a long-term uh, leak from the outside that had just been moving into the foundation walls in the basement. They needed to get that handled. A lot of visible mold was down there. They were gonna get a lot of things, you know, cleaned up anyway, and it was safe because they could do all this on the way in. That was the only really significant uh, mold issue in that house. So it got me thinking, you do not only rely on one data point. The big issue I'm seeing with a lot of people is if they don't know what they're looking for, they might just throw money at a random inspector who's in and out of their house in 20 minutes. They get an air test and they get a false negative. And so in this video alone, you're gonna get way more value uh, than that five or $600 wasted inspection that I just described there. If you do get a good inspector who's really gonna be thorough, they'll likely use a pretty similar philosophy to what I'm gonna talk about here. So this is a forensic kind of uh, investigation here, okay? We are uh, detectors and we're trying to look at things 360 and multi-layer with the equipment we have. We also have a lot of limitations, okay? So um, I think new technologies are gonna come in, new monitoring devices, mold dogs have a technology and their senses that humans don't. So there are limitations, but this is my philosophy on inspections that I do in person. And by the way, a big key component is you don't rush through this in under an hour. I mean, this is a multi-hour long scope uh, type of job to really assess a home. But for you homeowners, you can run through this pretty quickly and get a really good lay of the land before even hiring an inspector. So that's really a big passion of mine is before you spend a dollar with me or with anybody, go learn the stuff you can for free and then understand how to qualify someone based on things like this. I'm giving you those cheat codes. So the mold checklist, okay? How do I look for issues in a home? Well, we'll call this the client interview, like you would at a doctor's office, hopefully, with a good doctor, is what's the history of the home? Any renovations? Is there water damage? I have all this in my questionnaires that I send to people where we have a really good idea of what are the symptoms like? Do you feel different in the home versus out of the home? All these historical um, pieces of information are so important to start to get an idea of different things. If I hear about the three leaks you had in the one you know, master bedroom or uh, bathroom area, well, then I'm already kind of, you know, getting warmer on a potential issue. So you get, collect as much data here, right? We check that box of a really thorough interview. And there's several, several things to be asking in this process about the history of the home, about renovations, were things covered up, current or previous water damage, um, how the owners had previously kept the home, how have the maintenance steps have been, is this a new HVAC system? You're gathering, gathering data. This is part of my mold timeline as well. So look into the mold timeline video. Uh, next up is visible evidence. So now the inspection starts and I'm using my eyes. What can I see? What are the signs of water damage? Swelling, building materials, warping, uh, different materials. It, you can see staining, right? Different things that show water damage. 
and using a bright flashlight will make your eyes see a lot more. You start to skim a wall or skim a, uh, a surface here, you're gonna see texture, you're gonna see uh, a lot of different things that the naked eye wouldn't see. So a bright flashlight's gonna be your cheat code there. Everybody can get that, right? Get a good bright flashlight for under 30 bucks. Then we start to, now we check that box, right? So we, we're, we're making progress here. We're not just running into a house and collecting a test and thinking that's gonna just give us more data than all this, right? Next up would be smells and senses, okay? I really take uh, into consideration that right brain approach, not just the logical numbers, but also how is someone feeling? I've literally had moms in the home uh, say, I just know there's an issue right here. And sure enough, I inspect and do all this and more, and they were right. There was an issue in that area um, because of their senses. So uh, whether it's a sixth sense or just the being environmentally attuned or different sensitivities, whatever it might be, uh, we need to really be aware of what is our body telling us or just what are we sensing and smelling. That's a huge one is the microbial volatile organic compounds, the MVOCs that get released off of mold can start to move us in the right direction as well. And those smells have potential uh, health issues. More information will be coming out on that. Is there a musty odor? You know, how do you feel in this room, right? So now we're just getting more and more data points where we're starting to fill in um, a lot more information to to give us that high likelihood of, is there a mold issue here or not? Can we confidently say, no, we're good, or yes, there's an issue. And that's why we use all these different factors. Thermal imaging. This is the, uh, my next step personally when I'm doing an inspection. You don't need to have this as a homeowner necessarily. If you wanna invest three, four, five hundred dollars to get a good thermal imaging camera, it can save a lot. Uh, I've found a lot of active issues that way. but. Some people think that's kind of the end-all be-all. It just gives us a temperature differential infrared visibility on different things. It will show if there's an active issue of a funky you know, shape of, of a dark spot that could be moisture. That's why my next data point is very important to merge with the thermal imaging scan. So I'll walk the whole house. I'm looking for hot spots, cold spots, different places where um, there could be a potential uh, moisture infiltration. And that's another one. So does my thermal imaging camera by itself, does that scan tell me everything that this tells me, this tells No, we need to put them all together. They all hold ground in this. Next up, moisture reader. So a good moisture reader is a pin or pinless one. You're gonna, either gonna puncture the material to see if it's wet or just put a surface uh, meter on there and should have a sensor that goes in it. It's very dependent on a, a good moisture meter, what type of material you're on, what's dry standard. There's different moisture meter kind of, uh, uh, ways to use it that's very, very important. So um, if the thermal imaging camera is showing a funky dark blue spot, that's likely moisture, not every time. So what do I do? Go and confirm it with the moisture meter. I put the surface meter on it, get a photo of that. I maybe put the pins in there to see if it's you know really saturated there. Many times it is. Okay, we have a high likelihood. The history of the home had a previous leak, right? So we know where we're going there. The visible evidence is showing us something. We're smelling something. We found it here we're having high likelihood of a mold issue, right? If all these things are checking off and there's no issues, does that mean we have no mold? No, we just continue this process. Maybe the borescope camera goes in next. Borescope camera uh, is only $30 on Amazon and that goes into really hard to reach areas. You can pull the cap off of a shower head, off of um, a sink underneath, and you can put that borescope small camera back in there. And now you have a lit up uh, camera that's going into places you could have never reached and it is giving a live feed onto your phone. For $30 on Amazon, the home, every homeowner can have access to places that would not be accessible unless you had to remove the material out. Love using borescopes. This one tool takes me maybe two hours of my inspection is just using that in different areas that are potential hotspots. Around uh, plumbing is a big one uh, and, and several other places that we can't find. There's a lot of other things, tips and tricks in the inspection process, pulling some carpet back, um, you know, just knowing where to look throughout the home and really staying curious, pulling some insulation back if we need to in different places. Um, but these are kind of the, the kind of catch all at the end, right? So I'm, I'm looking at all these data points that I'm assessing humidity. Oh, wow, this room is much more humid. Why is that? Um, this room stays cold all the time for whatever reason. Uh, this area in the basement has so much dust and, you know, or the attic is full of dust accumulation. Um, what's the status of the HVAC system? That's a whole video in itself, but whatever's in that is dispersing throughout the home. So that is a key, key, key component as well as the ductwork. How's the circulation and ventilation in the home and the building science aspects of that. 
Um, the exterior of the home is there, uh, you know, moisture just sitting around the foundation kind of seeping in. Uh, do we have issues with the stucco outside? These are a lot of uh, exterior signs that we can be looking for and really just an overall big 360 top to bottom approach and assessing every aspect of the home where moisture could be coming in and we're checking that after all that we probably have a good idea where to test we found an issue behind the sink with the bore scope we found with the thermal imaging camera uh, a uh, cool zone that did confirm as moisture now we can get a proper testing strategy let's take a swab of that what we saw with the bright flashlight when we looked there there was a really funky smell under the sink that we couldn't find much, but the smell was really there. Maybe we need to take an air test under there. Now the testing starts to come in. Uh, we want, we're just curious about how uh, filthy this old carpet is that we inherited from the, the previous owners. Well, we can do a disturbed air sample and move the, the air sample over, over the carpet and disturb the uh, air to, to push that stuff up and out and get an accurate reading of how contaminated that carpet might be because carpets are quite dust reservoirs and hold a lot of history. So I hope you're connecting the dots on uh, the fact that I don't go in a house and do a random thermal scan and think that I found everything or, oh, you're good. That's false negatives. It's lazy. It's not, uh, it's just not professional and it's not going to give you any thorough um, type of, of reading on the home. After we've done all this, we get the testing, then we can start to move down the mold timeline. That's for the next video uh, that I've already done that, that you can go and check out. What are those steps in the mold timeline so that we can actually get this thing done uh, in an effective way? and do what Dr. Michelle did, which was got all these things done, tested effectively, got a remediation plan, removed, dried, cleaned, and covered every single base so that now her and her husband can move into the house feeling much more confident because they did cover all these and cleaned on their way in that they'll be in a mold safe home. Hope that was helpful. If you have more questions, you need help one-on-one, -on -one, I have in-person options that I'll fly out to you if need be. If not, and you can do all this stuff yourself and you still need help after that, we can work together one-on-one -on -one, uh, virtually and uh, talk about all this. Get the photos, get the videos, get the test results if you have any. Uh, look over remediation estimates. Make sure that you're going to be spending the right amount in the right places. You're not cutting corners, but you're not going too over the top. And whatever questions you might have as a rent renter or homeowner, uh, be sure to subscribe here at Melrose Mold Solutions. And I hang out on Instagram often at Melrose Mold Solutions as well. So see me there.